we're back to look at the stock firmware. Uh, pull the tablet out of the box and turn it on and go through a small setup. And this is what you'll see. It's called tap and tap. It's slow. It's very slow. Uh, it's feature rich. I'll give them that. You know, possibly future updates, get it a little more optimized, especially for the dual core processor in this thing. Might make it a little bit better. Uh, actually, if, if it ran faster and it wasn't so slow and laggy, I would love this UI for what this is. Something you put on your coffee table and everybody in your family can use. The UI was well designed, poorly implemented. Uh, you've got three home screens. There's one, here's the second one. And there's the third one. Uh, those, I'll call them widgets for lack of a better word. I, you know, they're more like dynamic content boxes. You can decide what goes in the box but you cannot choose the number of boxes or the size at all. You just, when you're looking through the applications, it gives you an option of where to put it. We'll have a look at that here with the weather. Let's open that up. And as you can see, I said it was a little slow. It's taking its sweet time. There, there's the weather. Uh, you know, visually it looks good. You look at the weekly view or hourly view or today. You know, it gives you all the information you want. If you go into the settings, set your location, of course. Uh, home portlets, they call them portlets. You can see I can, you know, assign a certain thing to each individual box on the home screens. Uh, the way it's set up now is how it comes out of the box. You fool with this and set it up however you want. But it, you know, it's workable. Uh, over here, you got a clock. I'll bring it up. It's you know, it's a clock with an alarm and a timer, but it does look so different. I want you all to see, you know, there's the regular clock, there's your alarm, and there's your timer. You know, a lot of visual elements here, just still a little bit too slow for my taste. Let's go back home. Uh, this one is, you know, World Headlines ties into pretty much the stock news and weather client for, you know, Android on in Froyo or in Eclair. Uh, this one, it's going to load the first one on the list. You have to give it a second. Unfortunately, uh, I haven't found a way to make it load to the list rather than, you know, the first one in the list. Uh, and I'm not going to sit here and wait for it to, you know, root out what it finds at CNN or whatever. But you, you've seen this before. Uh, there we go, the LA Times. You, you know, you, you have a list of different content and you can go through it just like the standard Eclair and Froyo news and weather widget minus the weather. So we'll just go out of there. And here on the next home screen, uh, you can see there's the to-do list. You tap it, you can choose the to-do. Uh, here's the calendar, let's have a look at the calendar. Nothing on here syncs with Google. There is no market, there's no calendar, there's no Gmail. Uh, everything is standalone. So the calendar, you know, you can export your Gmail calendar and you know to an ICS and you know add it in through here but it's not going to sync uh, you know there's a monthly view there's a weekly view and I have to give it a second all the applications on here they take a while to load into memory I feel really bad about the way it, it is because there's a lot of potential here let's hope that you know once things get a little bit on board and maybe when it supports both the cores and the processor because you can see, and, and the, the touch screen, it is a lot more responsive than this. This is just, you know, this is just what it what it is. There, there's no other way to describe it. That was your weekly view. Here's a daily view when it loads. So you can see November 21st, 22nd, 23rd. And we'll scroll down if it'll let me, it's loading. You know, it makes for a rough video demonstration when it runs this slow, and it makes it difficult to use when it runs this slow, but it is what it is. If you enter things into your calendar, you can find them. You just have to give it time to load everything up. Uh, one saving grace is the email client. It's also slow. Uh, it doesn't sync with anything. You have to pull email down. Nothing is pushed, but it is laid out incredible. I love the, the email client on this thing. go back you load it up you can you know it remembers your last position here's the accounts I put in you know just a fake account for this review purpose you tap it in you go to your inbox 
Uh, it's not threaded. It's old, the old school email. Each part, each you know, individual mail is its own setting here. It's not a threaded con conversation view. Uh, but you tap one. There's Jesse. Jesse, I'd love to join you for drinks. Uh, I should have left yesterday. We're a little far apart. You can reply. And I do want to show you the keyboard. The keyboard, and you'll have to take my word for it because of the viewing angle on this, and we'll talk about that in a second. The keyboard is, it's passable. It's a little laggy, especially if you start typing fast, but it is laid out well. The touch sensor areas seem to be laid out really well. It's got autocorrect, just like the stock Android keyboard. It, you know, gives you the little bar at the top. The problem is the viewing angle on, on the tablet. It's got what I think has to be just a, a plain old netbook LCD display. Looks gorgeous as long as you're looking at it straight on. Uh, I have to have the camera set up and you know I'm, I'm looking through the camera lens here because I need to make sure the camera can see it but from where I am I see nothing but black. I don't I don't even see the keys. It's the viewing angle on this is bad. It is the biggest sore spot even worse than the slowness of the default UI but if it's something you're going to use on your lap and you can stare straight into it, looks good. This, this, great, this, this bleh, display looks really crisp and clear. So, you know, you just need to know that ahead of time. Sorry, I can't really demo out the keyboard for you guys. I hope you understand. You'll have to take my word for it. It'll pass. It's not great, but it's not too bad. <coughs> Let's go out of the email. Get that keyboard out of the way. And we'll look at the app drawer here. Save this draft. I'll have to cancel that out. Let it go down. Uh, you know, no, no fancy scrolling or anything. You just get a list of your applications. You can see I've installed a few things, you know, just to play with it and some of the essentials. Uh, Twitter client, you know, most everything you see here is stock though. I've, I've added just a few things. We've had to go ahead and root the thing. You know just to make sure it would do that uh, but other than that a few things from the App Store which we're gonna have a look at here well first we're gonna look at the context contacts because I hit the wrong button uh, I put two in just to have something in there uh, it's pretty much the same thing you can put on any Android phone except remember these don't sync you have to enter everything by hand uh, there's me there's just you know something I put in for the wife just that's the way it is if you don't mind sitting and putting all your contacts in by hand you know it works pretty well I wish it's, it would sync and it can out of the box it doesn't but it certainly can uh, let's go back down here to the app drawer because I want everybody to see the included hand dango market uh, find it right here second to load we'll load it in just the web we saw skyfire the other day on the post so this is the stock web browser and it's the handango app store uh, there's a lot in there not near as much as the Android market but it does work well you pretty much can download and install right from the marketplace so it's better than not having anything at all but you know we'll get more into how you put the market and everything on this in a little bit so you know don't fret too much if you're not afraid to hack it up and if you don't want to hack it up, at least you have something. You can find probably most anything you'd need in you know, the Handango market. Let's look at the music player. Give her a second to load. As you can see, I, I wasn't kidding you, it's a little slow. Uh, you can search. You know, just type in, search through all your music. You can also list things by artist or album or you can list songs. Uh, let's go back to artists. I do have a little bit of music on here, one of my favorite bands. Let's see what we've got. So it plays in stereo. It's not the best sound in the world. Uh, I've heard much worse. You know, it's hard to transcribe it through camera and internet to you, 
but if you were sitting in here listening to it, you, you, you'd probably say the same thing. It sounds okay, a little bit tinny, not something I would, you know, want my dedicated music player to be. Headphones sound fine, just like any other MP3 player. Uh, but, you know, there's the, the music player, uh, you know, a little bit nicer than stock Android. Uh, album art doesn't work. I have this set up correctly and it just doesn't show. But, you know, that is what it is. Let's go back out of here. One more thing I want you guys to see, because this is probably, you know, the, the saving grace. Another saving grace. I've been saying that a lot. But let's look at some video. If it loads up. Give her a second to go. This is a good media consumption thing right here. Uh, I, this is, you know, raw footage out of my camera works. Uh, this is a Windows media file that I've saved to YouTube. It works. Here's, let's look at this. This is this week in Google. Let's see what our friend Leo is up to. <coughs> it's a little bit smaller file. It'll load a little faster. It's so we're going to use that. So you can see the video playback is, you know, it's pretty good. They, this thing does handle media fairly well. I'll give it that, you know, for all its drawbacks, it does that just fine. Uh, the settings, one last thing we want to look at, because that's different from what we're used to. They've got their own overlay on the settings. Uh, pardon that. I should have shut that off before I started. And yeah, it takes a while to load too. I apologize. But I do want to show you guys as much as I can about this, especially Friday. You know, these are going to be flying out of the woodwork. So I want you all to know what you're getting into. It's pretty much, you know, you'll understand all this when you look through it. It's all the same. It's just laid out a little bit different. I want you guys to see, you know, exactly what it's running here. It's uh, running Android 2.2, FRF 91. Here's your kernel version and the tap UI. Uh, this just got an update yesterday. I was told that the day before yesterday, these were absolutely unusable, wouldn't hold Wi-Fi, crashed all the time. So, you know, if the update yesterday is any indication, it's still slow, but it, it, it's usable now. It doesn't crash. It hasn't crashed on me. Wi-Fi is fine. It comes up out of sleep or hibernation, which I'll show you that too. Or at least I thought I would. There we go. You can put it in hibernation. I'll put it to sleep. Save a little bit of the battery. And we're testing the battery too. Uh, we'll be back more, a little bit more, because we want to hack this thing and show you how it runs when it's hacked. Like I said, we want to give you all the information you can, we can give you before they start flying off the shelves on Friday. We'll be back later. You all have a good one.